Morning YouTubers, uh, welcome back to Allotment Diggers. Well, in this episode, uh, I'm, I'm going to be showing you um, the front part of me, me plot now, now the ice, all the snow's gone. Um, I'm just going to sh quickly show you all the, the bulbs that are coming up in the beds and the planters. Um, so, give you some idea of the amount of um, daffodils and what have you are coming up. Um, but probably about half of them are showing at the moment when the rest come up it'll look absolutely glorious so I'm going to take you quickly out there and I'm going to um, show you around the front part of the plot and show you all the glorious bulbs all coming. Well guys I thought I'd take you on a bit of a, a walk around the, the front part of the plot just to show you some of these um, daffodils and tulips and crocuses, irises, hyacinths so there's all sorts of things coming up lupins um, but start off with these hanging baskets. These are coming up now. The load of uh, crocuses here. Uh, not much happening in this one yet, but they will be. Uh, you can see a load of um, irises there, little dwarf irises. Again, more crocuses coming up here on this pot. Down here, you can see the tulips starting to break through now. In that particular pot there are some beautiful tulips in there, they're more like a rose than out else. In this planter here, um, they just start, the bulbs are just starting to come up now, you can just see they're starting to break through everywhere you look. There's a lot come through, There's, them are crocuses, 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 then you've got all around here you've got like tulips there's a few daffodils in there as well that's just one planter uh, strawberries are doing well along there we got a load of uh, gladiolas and there's a few tulips what we've put in there as well all along this edge and down these edges here in the strawberry bed this particular bed well uh, we've got a few crocuses coming up now over in the either corner and then it's just a mass of tulips and daffodils coming up here now just here we're going to be putting um, uh, a gooseberry and just a little bit further over there right next to this there's uh, an afghan popper which comes up there's two of them actually the other one's just starting to come up now but just here where that little bit of green is we're going to be putting um, a blueberry in here so we've got to remove a few of these um, tulips but uh, I, I, you know, I can live with that but the bed is absolutely covered in tulips everywhere you look there's tulips daffodils and crocuses in here and we've also got um, sedum um, which I've, I've got to cut the the golden these them um, these pieces off and then the new growth is already pushing through now um, I've, I've noticed they've got buds on the current bush there and there's a few on this one and I'm not, this one got damaged as well so we, this might have to come out yet uh, but we have got other bushes to go in the places so that's just this, these two beds uh, let's move on to this next bed and uh, again if we come down here let's kneel down a bit of uh, these that one might I might take this um, rosemary out we've got a few rosemary bushes here uh, but if you look you can see all the tulips and daffodils all coming up in these borders everywhere you look every few inches you'll see a bulb coming up all the way through these are uh, double-headed daffodils there must be about 13 14 varieties of daffodil and that's not to take away from probably 20 different types of um, tulips in this bed alone and the same for that bed over there there's uh, not just uh, one lot of tulips there's about 30 different uh, tulips and daffodils there uh, female blackbird there uh, she's come for a dinner I've not put a dinner out yet Ooh, there's a male as well male and female blackbirds and uh, anyway as you can see the 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 bushes are starting, the buds are starting to open now all the planters all coming alive along here 
and the table, all the there's an hanging basket there with crocuses in. All these are crocus tulip, tulip zaruses. Uh, got a few tulip, uh, um, crocuses there. There's not much good where they are. Might bring them to the front, but all these there are all plant, full of uh, plants. The tables there full of crocuses. There's irises, there's daffodils, tulips. Again, there's more crocuses along here, the tops. I'm not too sure what this one is. We nearly killed these. There's a red and there's a, there's a, a, a white one. We had them in standing in water. So I forget who it was who noticed them. Well, we took them out of the water now and they're doing well. And the buds are starting to open. Same here, crocus here. These are another type of crocus. I've not got all the names. Again, more crocus here. Uh, so basically that's this side so walk around this side these are the roses uh, climb slowly climbing up this arch you've got to be careful around here because there's a little wren that nests inside that green cupboard there and I've seen blue tits looking in, looking at that there and also in these feeders so hopefully we'll get a few birds nesting this year over there in them planters we've got crocuses and irises we've got some uh, gooseberries there uh, not gooseberries um, red currants over there underneath just near the table we need to bring them and move them into the into these beds you can see the f there's eight uh, rhubarb crowns there that have started to come to life and all the way around three rows of tulips daffodils all the way around this bed you can see a load of daffodils coming up now these are the the ones what have been in for a long time planters are full of daffodils and tulips we've even got a row of daffodils going right down the orchard there right underneath the table and right along there's a, a blueberry there as well and there's also a blueberry underneath that netting the the trees start the buds are starting to come to life slower but um, yeah, this bed is absolutely covered in tulips and daffodils, uh, along with the rosemary. Here's a rosemary in the corners, and uh, like I say, we've got we've got uh, eight um, rhubarb crowns. Anyway, again, we're coming over onto this is the current. Um, bed these have got black red and white currants in here and you can see the buds are starting to open now and all the bushes um, you can see lupins there lupins there lupins there but if you notice you can just start see coming through the the horse manure um, buds everywhere you look that's a blade of grass come here you you bugger you're not having you in there um, Again, we've got them coming through. They're just pushing everything up now. As you can see, this they've actually done the job there. They started to break through. These are daffodils, crocuses. There's several different varieties of these. Up to about 30, 40 different varieties of daffodils and tulips. Again, they're all coming up along here now. All the way around, in between the in between the bushes right down the center is a load of daffodils and tulips um, you know we've got bushes in here and uh, fair dues but we want color as well so in between all the bushes we put tulips and daffodils again the sedums coming up here this basically mirrors that side for the sedum um, we will be taking this off this is just dead growth and all the new growth is just there all the way along the front as well here is uh his bulbs coming up we're still not done out with this uh, these strawberries unfortunately they're still there uh they're in the pots but we, we only need 50 and um, we'll sort these out shortly no big rush again we come round to this bed here it mirrors the bed over there and it's got exactly the same amount of bulbs in that's that for this side here seems to do a little bit better uh, we've got crocuses daffodils tulips irises um, blue binders there's all sorts of stuff in here 
and these ones here these are particular these uh, tulips are fantastic wait can't wait for these to come up they're beautiful they really are again crocuses in the hanging baskets there's my sun and moon we've got two of them they come from Sierra Leone uh, mate of mine who's a soldier he actually watched the guy carving that one and there's another one on the other shed and um, coming along here you can see these planters are all coming to life they've got tulips and all sorts of crocuses and daffodils and all sorts of things inside them too this lot here this um, fencing is going to be painted and I'm going to have to move it some from here eventually again We've got a load of um, bulbs in that planter there. We've got plenty of planters inside the greenhouse there. There are absolutely piles of um, planters full of different um, spring and summer bulbs as well. Again, you're looking at a load of daffodils in there. So generally, that's, uh, that's what the front part of the plot's looking like at the moment. All the bushes are starting to kick into gear now. We've got two bushes to go one to go there and one to go there as well but uh, yeah it's looking pretty good the front part the plot the back part well that's all for my vegetables and I'll show you that again but I thought I'd just show you the front part and all these um, all the bulbs breaking through and it looks absolutely it will look glorious in the next next four or five weeks it'll be, it'll be blinding on here for colour and that's what um, I'm hoping to achieve. So um, let's go into the front greenhouse now and tell you what else we've been doing today. So there you go, absolutely wonderful. We've got two bushes to plant in um, in one of the beds uh, at the moment. Um, we've got a bush on my mate's plot that needs to be brought down here before the end of um, February. After that, yeah, trans transplant um, fruit bush is a no-no really so uh, we've got to do that before the end of February I'll probably do it in the week um, uh, however we've got a, a, um, a blueberry which we can put in there as, as, as well so we're gonna have four bushes in there plus all the um, flowers I've got to emphasize as well in them beds when I say there's daffodils and tulips what I'm not saying is there's about 20-30 different varieties in each different bed so there's not just um, like one variety you'll see a lot of the same variety but you're going to see hundreds and hundreds of different um, ones as well so you know all together is about 60 70 varieties of daffodils and tulips so there's quite a lot of them and they've also come up anyway um, quickly show you um, what's inside this greenhouse uh, just ticking away nicely they will need to go outside so let me show well, you quick what's look in, in this um, front greenhouse at all these planters because there's a lot of things in these planters like in this bed here there's crocuses irises and daffodils um, in that there is what you call sun disc daffodils they're not they've only just put them in but you look in these baskets here these are baskets which sit on the ground um, full of little crocuses Isims are coming up now. now over there we've got these rose trees we've got a couple of them there just starting to come to life uh, that there's um, uh, black hamburg in the pot we're going to be planting that out eventually we've got lily of the valley just starting to come through here we've got some pink aspila aspilia aspilia but spill spill aspilia anyway pink aspilia and um, in that pot there nothing happening with that one that there, what that what looks like a stick sticking out is um, jasmine. Uh, more lily of the valley there, just starting to come through. Uh, this here, um, I'm not too sure what that one is. But over there we've got uh, Nadine Bodina, African flower. Big bulbs on them, I tell you, right in the corner. Got more Aspelia there. Uh, what's that one? Red mop polka, uh, then, other, then we've got over here we've got some more irises round there and crocuses. Uh, grow houses are full of um, full of onions and what have you, what needs to go out. And we've actually got a couple of um, raspberries there, I'll tell you more about them. 
um, later on in the week. So that's what's going in this greenhouse. It's pretty much the same sort of stuff what's in the other greenhouse. These will all be coming out shortly. We'll be cleaning the sides again of the um, of the, the greenhouse, uh, giving them a good washing, and uh, then we're going to put some potatoes in, in buckets in here very shortly. So watch out for that. Anyway, let me just uh, plunk my derriere down and tell you what else we've been doing today. So as you see, we've got um, them little light little baskets that sit on the floor full of crocuses. I don't know if you know this, uh, most of you probably will, but um, the crocus um, is where you get um, saffron from, believe it or not, the, the stigma, the little red stigma thing that sticks out, well that's where the, the where they get saffron from, it. you know I've got to get an ounce of saffron from here, I've got that many, <laughs> many um, crocuses, but um, yeah, we've got absolutely hundreds of crocuses, and um, yeah, they, they had natural colour. I'm hoping to get a load of um, um, snowdrops as well. Uh, I want to get a lot of snowdrops, and I really do like them as well. My mate Larry, who's just passed away, he's got some beautiful snowdrops on his plot. They're really, really spectacular, and um, I would love to get them just like what he's got. So in the next few years, uh, hopefully we shall have, have, shall have um, a few nice patches of them. We've got a few in these uh, pots here. We really need to put them outside, but I brought them in here uh, for the time being because I've got so many other things to do. We will be planting them out eventually, um, probably around the trees. They do like to, you know, sheltered area. I have done a few videos, uh, put together um, some of the summer bulbs as well. Uh, so there's a video coming out for them and there's also another video um, the fit, getting that chicken coop and sorting it all out and uh, yeah it's a pretty long one that one so I'm, I'm saving that one up <laughs> until there's, there's nothing else to do and then I can throw that up for you to see it's uh, pretty awesome as well some of the shots in it as well uh, what we did um, you won't believe what the what how strong the sun was that day but on that video you will see what I mean when I do post it up how, how strong the sun was and it got a glorious day as well to be painted that's all I'll say anyhow I, um, I've not done any seeds yet and I thought we'd start off with a few simple ones um, doing the leeks uh, so we've got some muscle butter leeks and um, we've got a um, a polystyrene box you can get them from fishmongers uh, tropical fish shops it's what they deliver the fish in you get lids on them as well and they can't they throw them out they can't get rid of them but uh, you know if you go in the shops and they ask for them I'm sure they'll give them you yeah? and these things here they've got um, this one what I've got here a particular one is um, add iced broccoli in of all things so um, like I said if you can get with a lid you can do mushrooms and anything can them but in this case we're using it because it's firm, like insulated and we can start the the leaks off so let me show you a quick little video of um, me actually doing that well guys this is what we do as muscle butters leaks in every year okay there's a bit of a uh, green <laughs> a bit of uh, what's the name around there we didn't wash it it's uh, one of these insulated tops and uh, these are the these are what we're going to be doing uh, muscle butter leeks, these are very hardy and definitely reliable and tasty um, like I say, harvest time around about October but uh, as it says on the pot you can start to sow them January, February so we're going to get the these away now these, uh, yesterday and uh, I noticed uh, when I got home and to do the video uh, to, to, to do the editing I uh, the, the actual video was blurred but what we've done we sprinkled some seeds in the top here and then lightly using this little this riddle we riddled some compost over the top about two three millis of compost we've watered them and uh, we put this lid back on and uh, hopefully in the in the next four or five days we're going to see some germination of these muscle butter leeks 
But yeah, when I got home the other day, uh, today, um, yesterday, I realised my mistake. But I've already done them, so I can't really do them again. There you go, a, a piece of perspex on the top, and um, a label. We did them yesterday, it was sun, it was glorious yesterday. The weather, uh, inside the greenhouse, it was in its it was 70s, the, the, the compost was warm, the water was warm. We've got a little pocket here where we put the seeds, the seeds, we warm the seeds up. So I reckon we should get germination by the end of this week. I'll keep you posted on that. Um, like I said, the seeds are so tiny, so you don't need a lot of compost on them. Uh, I mean, they're about a millimetre, if that. So you only want to put a couple of millimetres of um, compost over the top of it. Make sure it's pressed down, a bit of water. And let Mother Nature do its uh, do its duty. But uh, yeah, we've got them off to a fine start. And um, we also, while we're doing it, we've got these the broom banana slots and... Um, I've got a bit of space in one of my grow houses in the in the middle greenhouse on the on the plot like and um, I decided uh, to, to do some start some zebroom banana shallots and what I've done is rather than just putting one seed per station I've put two uh, you get 160 seeds so I've done two trays each tray's got 40 um, stations in it so um, two seeds per station it works out 160 seeds two trays you know two seeds in each so that's what we've done so I'm going to show you me doing that now um, so anyway I'm going to get my shallots now and this is where I keep them I've got a little pocket here the seeds are nice and warm so uh, just warm the seeds up before we start to plant them I'm going to swing the camera down here and you can see a couple of uh, like I say you can see a couple of trays now this is this is one of them, a uh, 40 cell tray. Um, I might as well just fill this one up. We've done a, we've already filled three up. Uh, but what I want to do is show you. Once they're filled up like that, and then what you do, you get your fingers, just poke them in. Just to Once you put a seed in it and you water it, it'll shrink. You know the water, the you know the it'll basically disappear. So I'll just put another. Looks like we're gonna have to do some more of this clover compost. That's what we're using. Uh, right. So what I need now is a tray. So I'm going to put them in a tray here, so that's a tray. Now then, what I need to do, I need my little dibber. And uh, I'm just going to put a little hole in the centre. And when I say little, we're only just a little indentation of about 5 milli. So once I've done this, then we can start sorting the seeds out. There's Forty of them, bloody hell, eh? Oop, a bit of compost there, it's not rotted down properly. Okay, so we've got all 40 holes. So now we need the Zabroon banana slots there, them. Got a knife here. Just uh, tear open the pack. Should be another pack inside. There we go. With over 150 seeds. What I'm doing there, I'm just so they all go down at the bottom so when I do this they don't all come all over, fall all over the show what I'm going to be doing is putting two of these um, shallots per per station very fiddly I'm 
there are the seeds and what I'm going to do is like I say I'm going to put two actually there's only one there it could take some time guys There we go, so I've got all, all of them done now. So when I'm tipping them back, tipping back over the over the tray, now I'm just gonna gently water them in. using fresh drinking water there we go Gently pushing them down. The water has actually um, covered the seeds. What I'm doing, I'm just making sure the seeds in contact with the soil. There we go, that's it. Jobs are good and now all I want to do is put propagate a lid on that and uh it's a broom banana slots. There goes the and what I'll do is I'm actually just putting a bit of water inside the actual propagator lid that when it starts to warm up will turn into make it turn into a bit of a micro climate and the water um, will drip down back onto the seeds so you know that's it really for this so that's the first one sorted out so I'm going to do one more and then uh, we'll find somewhere to put them but as you can see we've got plenty of trays there to crack at so I'll be right back guys once I've done me, me second one Okay, we put one of us as a broom a banana shallots here, and right in the very top up here, we've put another one. Now, um, what we'll do, we'll keep an eye on them. Oops, be careful with these onions, these need to go outside real soon, so we will be putting them out. But um, at the moment, uh, we've still got to keep them in here, it's m much too cold at the moment. But yeah, as you, as you see there, that's where we put them, right in the very top. In fact, let me just leave this label in here so we know exactly where what they are. Even though there's a little label inside the the propagator, and uh, we're going to, just going to cover it all up now. But the the most heat is up here in the top, so they shouldn't take too long to germinate. And uh, we'll give you a quick update on them soon. As okay. So there you go. Simple enough. I use the, the little rolls on these bottles. You can get them from um, where are they? Let's see, if we can get one. There they are. They fit any type of bottle. Just a little roll, so you squeeze the bottle and it comes out like a watering can. The 75p they were in World Coles. Um, they're called bottle cap sprinklers. So if you can't get them in World Coles, I'm sure you get them online. Um, I bought 10 for, the, for a pound, I could have bought, I should have bought more really because I've been giving them away, I've only got about 3 or 4 left myself and uh, um, they really are handy things to have and I use them to, to water around the seas and what happens is with water it was covering the, 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 
compost was covering the seeds so it was just patting them all down putting a label on them I used the the little um, roses as well to spray it inside the the actual um, propagator lid so that was when I put the lid on um, once it started to eat up it creates like a, a micro environment inside the the um, the propagator and uh, I don't have to, to water them basically for a few weeks uh, they do when they dry out I you know, water them um, and I won't, wa I won't water them in rainwater until the seeds are up and you know they're about an inch high and then I'll use the water from the the water but, but all the, the seeds are all done in um, tepid water uh, tap water we we'll leave it in the greenhouse with the lid off so all the chlorine can escape from it and um, then we use that the next day but we make sure it's warm we don't want cold water we don't want to shock the seeds we want them you know to you know oh that's lovely and warm that's like having a warm bath and um, hopefully up they come anyway we've put them in the the middle greenhouse we've used a uh, clover compost um, and basically uh, we use fresh tap water and um, this should do really well so they're in the propagator in a grow house in the, the warmest greenhouse I've got on the allotment and again germination shouldn't take that long we'll keep an eye on them but doing two seeds together is perfectly fine we did three seeds last year and we put them in as plugs and um, like you would do when um, spring onions and they all was really big you know even the ones what was there was free there was equal size and there was pretty handy so we that's what we're we, we've done this year but we've only put two in so we'll probably put four close to each other I mean I can't see it making any difference um, whether you're moving further apart or closer together really they just seem to grow and they store really well um, so yeah they're in the greenhouse we've got a few we've got them off to a start we've uh, we've done a few other uh, sowings as well we'll show you that again i don't want to bore you to death uh, but um i keep you posted on them we've got a lot of other videos to show you as i was saying we've got the the, the chicken coop we managed to get the chicken coop now um a lot of faffing about there but you'll see all that in another video we've got some summer bulbs which are in here and uh, in another three weeks all these bulbs will be coming out of here and they'll be going into the cold frame the ones what are too you know it's still still too cold for will be going in the cold frame the rest will be going outside and then we're going to get the potatoes all sorted out i can tell you my car returned up eventually so now i've got all my potatoes all barring them um condor i can't get them anywhere I've tried, only only need five seeds. I've uh, five, five seed potatoes, what do five buckets, see if I can get the biggest potato. It working. So I might have to to use a cell pole. I mean them them potatoes grow really big as well. But I would have liked to have um, tried a condor, you know, a few seed potatoes, but I've been everywhere. Everywhere. I've I've searched online. Apparently there was a there was a bad harvest last year um, I don't think that's the case I just think everybody wants them <laughs> and uh, they've all beat me to it it just uh, it just after next year I just have to order them a little bit earlier simple as that um, I ordered everything except for the condo um, so that's my own fault but uh, we'll be doing the the potatoes very shortly anyway I've got to disappear now I've got to make a phone call we've got um, We've got all the, the compost coming tomorrow um, for the for the allotments shop. I've got to organise all that, all the stuff's all coming and um, I've got all my soldiers all waiting to, to to carry it off the wagon when it comes. However, I haven't got the time so I'm gonna have to phone them up now and find out exactly what time they're gonna be delivering it all. And then I can get all all the lads down. Um, they're all I've got everyone's been sending me messages saying yeah we're coming out mark not a problem mate we'll be there just give us a time so i need to find the time and um, tomorrow morning um, we'll get all the clover we get about three or four different um lots of stuff each year 
and uh, already I do know the clover's almost all gone because I need probably 10 20 bags <laughs> uh, I'm sure Mike from putting along is gonna gonna want 10 bags or more probably the same amount as me we've only just ordered 60 we've ordered all the sea potatoes all the onions everything's got it all coming tomorrow so I just need to find out the time so that's what I'm gonna do now I'm gonna head off and hopefully We'll have all the uh, the goodies, and our shop will probably open four for me. It should have opened um, two weeks ago, but we had a problem. Um, the the people who was running it didn't want to do it no more. We had to call uh, a, a committee meeting and uh, discuss whether we was going to keep the shop going or close the shop down anyway. Um, reason uh, prevailed and uh, we're keeping the shop we've got a lot of people who still who was actually working in the shops still want to do it it's just that the main people who were doing it don't want to do it no more so we've organized all that and um, yeah it's just took a little bit more time to do the order get the order here so that's why the shop's not open today uh, but what's it today I'll look at the date Monday, blind as a bloody bat, guys. I have so it's very difficult. I won't wear my glasses, very vain. <laughs> I look like um, bloody oh, now. The older guys, I know what Joe Knighty looked like, okay. In these glasses, I look like Mr. Magoo, so I'm not going to wear them in front of the camera. <laughs> but I'm blind as a bat, and I have difficulty trying to read the bloody labels. It's not that I'm illiterate or out like that. When I finished school, I had all O levels. That's that's what the the top grades were at the time. But blind as a bloody bat. I need to get a decent set of glasses that fit my face. I had some glasses made for me, and they don't even sit on me on my ears. They're terrible. They're absolute. And I'm not going to put them on to let you have a laugh. <laughs> but uh, yeah, anyway. Uh, it's 19th today, 20th we're getting all the, the the compost and what have you. So I'll keep you posted. We did the we did the um the leaks yesterday, so that's the eighteenth we started the leaks, so I reckon another four days, five days, and uh, we should see something happening in, in the if not, we have got a few other packs of seeds uh, to to do the job. We'll eventually get it done. <laughs> so <laughs> thanks for watching guys and um, I'll see you all in the next one. Leave your comments below and if you like what you see uh, why not hit the like button or better still why not subscribe. There you go you can see more crazy videos from uh, allotment diggers.